Welcome to my palm garden. Thank you. Can I call you palm lady? Why, well, you may. On just an average size block in an inner Melbourne suburb, Jo Wilkins has made her own personal palmetum, a wonderfully diverse collection of fascinating palms. Now, why palms? They are the most adaptable and varied plant we can possibly have in Melbourne. There's something for every ecological niche, and uh, apart from that, they're gorgeous. But I always think palms, tropics, you know, but here you are in the middle of Melbourne. Are they successful? Come and have a look and tell me if you think they All are. All right. Oh, this is good. This was my first palm garden. Yeah. This is for plants that like a lot of sun and free drainage. Um, this is my very first palm. Washingtonia robusta, or the Mexican fan palm. Quite a commonly available palm. And I love the trunk. Big yes. bulbous looking thing. And these are other desert palms. I really Largely. like this bluish one. That's a fabulous Brahia Amata. It tolerates uh, frost. It will open a new frond when it's 48 degrees. Ooh. It is the most bulletproof palm in the whole garden. Jo, now what's this one? Oh, that's a hybrid between two quite common palms to create an uncommon fast-growing alternative. It's a Cyagris or Queen crossed with a Butia or Jelly Palm. Now over this side, now that does look like a coconut. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? That's Parajabea cocoides. It's a South American palm. Through here, we've got what are commonly known as elephant's foot or ponytail palms. Yes. They're not a true palm. They're a terrific palm companion, though. Yeah. Um, very, very drought tolerant, and uh, they make good, uh, good neighbours for palms. And what's that one? Ah, uh, that's the mighty Jabea chilensis. This is my very favourite palm. It's, uh, it's kind of the oak of the palm world. It lives for a thousand years. Go on with you. So it paces itself early, shall we say. This yeah. is uh, 12 years old. Now this one, that's an extraordinary looking palm. It's what many people have been stabbed by a Canary Island date palm. Oh, in, tell in me, the yes. yes. Still got the scars. Uh, this is a mild-mannered alternative from India. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it has got spines, but they're not horrible. Ah, yes. Uh, this is a hybrid of your common Bangalow and Alexander palm. So oh, yes. they look a little bit different. This one's a bit more robust, like the Bangalow. This one has got this really pronounced scarring where the old uh, frond bases come off. And what's this fascinating thing? Well, it's flowering at the moment. It's wow. A, can I say this? It's in the process of having sex with itself to, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to produce some fruit. <laughs> I love the way Jo has positioned plants in spots in the garden where they should be happy and thrive. And she's created this marvellous, lush, peaceful, almost timeless environment. This is what people associate with palms, I think, generally, a rainforest kind of environment with, uh, with a high canopy and lots of, lots of things growing at different levels yes. underneath. And that's, that's the kind of effect that I'm after. That one up there, that huge one, has got the most amazing inflorescence of it's sort of gold and yellow. Uh, that's a Cyagris. That is a, what people call a Cocos palm. Are there really any special ones that intrigue you more? Oh, I've got favourites, of mm. course. I love the little walking stick palm from tropical Queensland. That's, that's a beauty. It's nice the way it's flowering. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's lovely. And there's one back there that's got the most beautiful shaped trunk. That's the uh, Mount Lewis Bangalow. Right. Uh, Conta Phoenix purpurea. Jo, I can see you like to propagate your own palms. It can be hard to get hold of baby plants, in which mm. case, growing palms from seed, like these ones. Yeah. Great idea, nine years from seed, these guys. You grew those? Yes. They've done Anybody very can. well. Grow palms, I recommend it.